this Christmas crowd. Let me hurry up. <laughs> in time, look at somebody say, in time, church. It's a different time now. Things have to be different when it comes to an end time church. Amen. You got to either be about it or just don't even come. This is the real deal. This is the end. Y'all believe it's the end times? This is it. Look at somebody and say, this is it. Y'all, this is it. Jeremiah 10, same passage that was talking about uh, some of the... uh, them making the idols and all of those things and God began to uh, Jeremiah speak to Jeremiah about how he was the true and living God and so don't be creating these fake idol gods or whatever down on verse 20 Jeremiah 10 and 20 he says my tabernacle is spoiled and all my cards or accords are broken my children are gone forth of me and they are not he's Likening himself to a woman, a motherless child, really. My children are just gone. And there is none to stretch forth my tent anymore and to set up my curtains. So there's nobody to even decorate my house or be in the house of the Lord. Everybody has gone because the tabernacle is spoiled. This is what's happening right now. I'm not talking about the future few years ago when I was preaching, I was talking about the future. In 2021, the end of 21, I'm talking about now. The tabernacle of the Lord, the churches around us, the churches in America and other countries, many of them are spoiled. The new world order has spoiled God's tabernacles worldwide. The church that used to teach faith. I say the church that used to teach faith and healing by the power of God is now afraid and doubting that their beliefs were ever valid. You know when you stop believing in the healing power of God, you know that you start doubting whether any of it was real? See, you can't exclude a component of the Holy Spirit without questioning the validity of the Holy Spirit. Because what he said, he said. And if you come to him, you must first believe that he is who what? He said he is. So once you begin to question components of him, can he really heal me? I'm afraid of my, for my health right now. Then deep down, when no one else is looking, you're wondering if any of it is real. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that what? You must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that what? You're not going to diligently diligently seek someone that you doubt is really there. Can I tell the truth in here? Y'all going to let me preach in here? This is real. Yeah. So because he spoiled the tabernacles worldwide, now the church is doubting aspects of him, which makes them doubt the word, the validity of it, which makes them doubt what have we been doing? Is this real? Think I'll just stay at home from now on. The church of God is now becoming desolate because of the world's influence. So many divisions, oh gosh, ideologies and contrary spirits have driven people away from sound teaching and even the disposition to be taught. People don't even know the posture to be in to be taught. They're used to random videos, random this, did you see this, look at this, he said this, he said that, just a buffet of internet preachers. They don't even know how to get in the position to truly be taught. 
People want the word without responsibility. Yeah. 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 The Bible, look, the Bible is necessary. But being under a leader teaches you responsibility for that. So God combined the two. And he said, there are some that are prophets, some pastors, some teachers, some preachers. For the edification of the body. So you can learn the posture to be taught. You can't skip over that process. Or you're just a scattered sheep. Believe in anything that comes on your feed. It all goes together. But that's the world's influence. They want you as a believer thinking like the world. The world creates their own morals. Their own code of ethics. Whatever works for them. You can't be like that in the kingdom. You have to align. With what God is saying. But you first have to posture yourself. To learn how to be taught. Then when you're dealing with a generation that grew up without authority, growing up without parents, growing up on their own team, then it's hard to get them to understand that posture. And they're going good for a while. They'll be doing real good and they just wow out. But they just wow out. They didn't understand the posture, how to posture themselves to be taught. So many divisions, ideologies, and contrary spirits is driving people away from sound teaching and even the disposition to be taught. Jeremiah 4 and 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. Now they're doing all the feast and they're doing all of the things that are required of them to be Jews. But God said they're foolish and they haven't even known me. Because all while they're doing those things, they're still doing what they want to do in their heart. They are sottish children. And they have done and and they have none understanding. Now they are wise to do evil. They know how to do what they want to do. But to do good, they have no knowledge. What happened to these folks? Look at somebody say, what happened to these church folks? As knowledge has increased, those that are called of God to teach and preach on his behalf. Now, you know there are people that are called of God to teach and preach on his behalf. Look at somebody and say, everybody's not called. Everybody's not called to teach or preach on God's behalf. Some folks call themselves. Some folks, their mama called them. Some folks, the desire to be something in this life called them. Some folks, the internet views and the likes, the popularity online called them. Some folks was called just to be an entertainer, but because they had an audience, they went to preach it. Can I teach Those that are called of God to teach and preach on his behalf have been shunned while others without God's true anointing and calling are followed and obeyed. You better make sure who you following has God's true anointing. Amen. Amen. And that they are called of God. No matter how much time, wisdom and knowledge one has in the faith, it's disregarded by this new age generation. They have no respect for the anointing of God. As a matter of fact, they'd rather not deal with anyone that's truly anointed. They would rather deal with the person that will give them the things that they want along with it. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all gonna wake up? First Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in a lot of times some should do what? De some going to depart from the... Y'all know somebody that departed from the faith? Yeah. Depart from the faith. 
They'll be in the faith, and then the first thing they say, well, you know, it's really not in the Bible that you got to be under a man. You know when that come, you know where this train is headed. No, uh, no, you know, all this man stuff. See, man being under man let you down. Man, you know, God ain't really even said that. Then the next thing, you know, I don't have to go to church to be saved. Isn't that how it escalates? It escalates to that. I don't have to be in church to be saved. Then the next thing is, I mean, I don't have to repent every time I sin. Jesus paid it all. Then the next time you see them, they got a dashiki on. And breath smell like the Buddha. I can smoke this weed. It clears me. See, the, the weed clears my mind so that the spiritual can really come. Once them lips get tinted, you know. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Then, next time you see him, it's a conspiracy. Okay, what's the conspiracy? The black people, we the lost tribe. We ain't supposed to be here. Look how evil white people are. What happened to them? Well, they didn't posture themselves, and they listened to somebody that didn't believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, you can talk. <laughs> you can talk the Bible all you want, but when you go to skipping over stuff in the Bible, very important parts. The Bible said we'd be able to cast out devils. The Bible said that the sick would be able to be healed by the prayers of the elders. That's what the Bible said. Miracles will happen when the power of God is operating. That's what my Bible says. So once you go to glossing over all of that and say, well, but you know, that was back then and that, you know, those things aren't happening. Okay, well then what's happening now? Things start changing. Then you get emotionally attached to a belief system. This belief system feeds your emotions, how you feel about folks. You haven't forgiven. You haven't let stuff go. You haven't repented. You haven't humbled yourself. So you need a belief system where you can be just as arrogant, prideful, and demonic as a sinner. So you're either going to go Hebrew, Israelite, black Hebrew, or you're going to go to a church where they're just shouting and dancing and sissies, short coats, jumping and shouting, and ain't nobody preaching against it. That's what you're going to do. Those are your only two choices. I don't know which one is worse. I just don't want my son. You know, I got a 15-year-old. I don't want him seeing sissies every Sunday with the short coats. Coat right here. Why your coat right here? Right here? Like all folks say, in the small of your back? Why is the coat? And you got your coat tucked in your pants. Something wrong with you. I just don't want that. We don't want that in here. No, man, we're going to draw the line. I'm sorry. You get that coat to your son. You go get your size. Bro. But first Timothy 4 and 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed. So they didn't just decide to leave, but they gave heed to spirits that were seducing them into leaving the faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, come on. Jeremiah 10 and 21, it tells you who's at fault right here. For the pastors are become brutish. And have not sought the Lord. I told you. Told y'all last week. A man that cannot call on God is not called of God. They have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper. 
Y'all know money, TV time, fame is not godly prosperity. As a matter of fact, it usually means the opposite. But just because you are popular don't mean you are prospering. You can have money and not prosper. Houses and cars. You can have all of it and not prosper. Yeah. Put the money up and ask your wife, does she like you? Yeah. Put the keys to that bins up. Ask your children to grade your parental performance. Let's see if you prosper. Therefore they shall not prosper. And all their flocks, all of them people, some of them have huge flocks. The Bible said they shall be what? Scattered. Scattered where? On the internet. Googling foolishness. Head full of all kind of knowledge from everywhere. Heart beating fast. Anxiety. Can't sleep. Grinding your teeth. Eyes can't even close. You can't relax. Because of all the stuff on your feed that you believe. You're scattered sheep. The devil did this on purpose. No, this was a plan. Against the only enemy of Satan. He ain't got but one enemy. He got one enemy on the earth right now. You know who that is? The church. The church. One enemy. What else you think the devil was mad at? He wants back what he got kicked out of. He's angry at one entity. Can I preach in here? Yeah, so this ain't a coincidence. Soon as all this jumped off, they didn't close the bar, they didn't close the strip club, no, they didn't close the supermarket, they didn't close the car dealership. First place they came was the church. You mean the devil planned a whole worldwide? A disease and pandemic and all that just to stop the church what other enemy does he have is the strip club his enemy is the grocery store his enemy are the restaurants his enemy he got one enemy can I keep going for the pastors are become brutish and all their flocks shall be, meaning it's going to happen, meaning it has happened. Can I keep going? So many pastors have followed the traditions of men and denominations. See, when you call to pastor, that don't mean that you do it like it was done before. It means you have to seek the Lord to find out what it is you need to do every man has a personality every man has a you know he, you know some men they have to pass a certain amount of people i know that's me i feel like now god may say something different but i feel like this is just right this it might be a little big but every man you know i don't i don't, I don't need to stand in front of thousands of people that's just not i you know, because I like walking and talking, you know. I like being in the crowd, meeting y'all. I like hanging out. I like being out there. I don't even have a place up here to sit because I like being with everybody. So when it gets too big, I can't do that. So that's me. But every man has a personality, a style, you know, just all of that. And God caters to that and uses that. 
He called the disciples. They were fishermen. Why? Because he's going to make them what? Fishers of men. So it's, all, it's inherent to who you are as an individual. So you don't, go, you don't approach pastoring a church mimicking someone else's way of doing it. That's where folks get in trouble. Then they don't see results and wonder why. Well, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So, so many, because they follow traditions and, and denominations, this has caused their churches to be powerless and yielding to the New World Order agenda of the elite. Why? Because a lot of the organized churches and denominations are with the agenda of the Pope and the Catholic Church. Catholic is universal. The universal Catholic Church. Many have mimicked that and followed those ways without seeking God. So, a lot of them are Freemasons. A lot of pastors, more than you know. They're Freemasons. Or they're controlled by the prominent members and uh, the prominent members in their church. So there are big givers in their church that are Freemasons. I was preaching at one pastor's church and he came up to me and told me, said, man, I didn't know you were going to say all that. Doc, I wouldn't have had you because, Doc, I, I, I mean, I, the boule and them, that's my biggest givers. Yeah. So they're controlled. Yeah. So when the mandate starts and, you know, all of that, they're the ones that push it into the church. You gotta follow, we got to follow the rules. We got to follow the rules. Why? Because they're prominent givers that you got to answer to. Now, I'm the type of person, I don't need to know who the givers are. So at this church, I have no idea who's giving what. I did that on purpose from day one. I didn't want to know. Because I want to treat everybody the same. Amen. I knew the day would come, this day would come, where the bigger givers might influence some of my decisions. But that's me. You do it your way, that's me. It's too tough of a day after Christmas sermon. Okay, okay, okay. Now, okay. yeah. so the Freemasons, or they're controlled by prominent members, or, or and, they have large financial obligations. Rent is due, so I can't preach against sin this week. We got a hundred people, but our building seats two thousand. So we gotta take four offerings. I'm like, they, but they the same people. Like you gotta take four offers from the same people. You might get cussed out. I'm tired, tired of giving. I'm saying what everybody's thinking. Sorry, Pastor, but this is ridiculous. We the same people. It's the same wallet. The same wallet. What was in my heart to give wasn't in my heart to give four times. Get your hand out my pocket. Somebody just needs to jump up and say that. I didn't say the N-word. <laughs> Haven't I done well this year? I've went a whole year. I ain't said the N-word in this place. Two years. Two years! Not at home, though. <laughs> but they are Freemasons <laughs> or controlled by prominent members and large financial obligations. They cannot do the will of God. Jew 10, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast. In those things they what? 
So they don't notice spiritual things at all. When you come in talking about casting out devils and folks, you, you know, when you start talking about casting out devils, healing the sick and all that, that means folk got to be trying to live right. You're not going to operate in any of that if folk ain't trying to live right. So if you're not preaching that folks need to live right, you're corrupting yourselves with another agenda. As a brute beast. Pastors and leaders that do not seek the Lord will always lead their flocks to fall in a ditch. That's what he said about the pastors. They have not sought the Lord. Did you ask God before you broke ground? Pastors and leaders that do not seek the Lord, you got to seek the Lord, will always cause their flocks to fall in a ditch. Without the leading of God, you will view going against the new world order as sinful and inappropriate. The impact of COVID-19 has been devastating, divisive, disproportionate, it's hurtful, and heartbreaking. The Conference of National Black Churches and its partner leaders, representing 20 million people, 30,000 congregations, says it's time for the black community to put faith into action. The black church is still a beacon of hope in this fight for life. Get vaccinated, and together we will save lives. That's what they teach you. But oh, we got to obey. Got to obey the government. We got to do what they say. They using that as brother, just say you scared. Or just say you got prominent members in there that you have to obey because they're good givers and you got rent but don't act like the government is being holy but without the leading of God you will view going against that as sinful or inappropriate oh brother we gotta use wisdom that's not wisdom you afraid man I don't need the wisdom of someone that's scared. You have a different kind of wisdom. It's wise to run, bro. It's wise. <laughs> and you obey in this world and what this world is saying. But God has a history of defying the wicked leadership of great nations. He always did it. He always had somebody that will say no to Baal. I'm not bowing to Baal. I'm not bowing to a false god. I'm not bowing to your agenda. I'm not doing what y'all say. I serve the true and living God who can heal my body. He has my health. Tell you, I'm going to preach like this if there's 10 people in here. But he has a history of doing this. Jude 19. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. What? You better quit following folks that don't have the spirit. You always know when they have the spirit. Because when they preach, it'll be convicting. It won't be entertaining. It won't make you feel good about the unforgiveness you carry. It won't make you feel good hating somebody. It won't make you feel good being malicious. It won't make you feel good going off and cussing and acting a fool. Won't make you feel good in your sin. That's how you know. Conviction will come. And you'll either have to change something or turn it off. They don't have the spirit. I'm going to keep preaching. Yes, I'm meals. <laughs> Buying in to the new world order has scattered the flock. I used to tell folks, boy, when TBN was going, oh, when they was going high and mighty, and they do the telethon and the megathon and the megatron, and the, they just doing all of that to raise all that money. I used to tell people, I was like, man, hey, this is not good. Because everyone's going to start equating 
their spirituality with their finances. And then when they don't have the finances, they think they don't have the spirit. Then they question God and wonder why some have and they don't. And they're not able to enjoy life in the position that they're in because they're coveting something else. I used to always say that in my brokest time. Oh, and I done had some, mother. Broke times. I would pray to the Lord and tell him, if you want me to live like this, I will. However you want me to be to preach your gospel, that's the life I will live. I used to tell this woman right here, if this is it, guess what? This is it. And we'll live like this and serve the Lord just like this. Yeah, I don't need, man, I'm telling you, because I didn't want to be manipulated by that. So when I would watch it, I would always question it. Why are they always talking about money? Why are they always flossing? Why are they always showing their stuff on TV? Man, that's so irresponsible. Sending the wrong message. Because most folks that's watching it don't have it like that. Talking about your jet and all of this and, and that. Okay, now what you doing with your jet? You can't get the fuel up now for 50 folks. In mass social distancing. Their churches were money driven. No, no, no. So many today are scattered sheep because they believe the lie and what? Strong delusion. Their churches were money driven, success oriented, and just banks. Financial institutions. This made it easy for the world to close them down. Real easy. Because once they were afraid something was going to happen to their wealth. If you're wealth driven and you're afraid something's going to happen to your wealth, you're going to do whatever you have to do to keep your wealth. Yeah, so they'll bring the shot right in the church. Bring the folks to give it right in the church. Use the church as the hub. Because we don't want nobody messing with our wealth now. If we got to do this to keep the wealth. Because they equate the wealth with spirituality. I'm preaching in this place. Yes, I am. Their churches were money driven, success oriented, and financial institutions. This made it easy for the world to close them down. Even those that are reopened are operating on life support. Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy. And scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. 10 and 22. Behold, the noise of the brute is come. An army is marching against the church. And a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate and a den of dragons. The devil has come for the church in the bible dragons always represented the devil in the bible and the devil came and planted himself in most churches because of the church's merge of the sacred and the profane so he came and planted himself in churches churches with no standard jelly back past the week won't stand up and say nothing. That's all. He's just a Rodney King. Bishop Rodney King. That's who he is. Can we all just get along? That's all right. Little of that ain't going to hurt nobody. Little of this. Little of that. Just, I mean, no. Just, no. No line. Yeah. So the devil, was, it was easy for the devil to plant himself there. Yeah. Oh, that's one of them churches where you come in, meet the pastor. How you doing? Well, you know, what you do at your old church? Well, at my old church, I was deacon. Okay, you a deacon. Hey, y'all, this is a new deacon. Day one? You didn't know he was a warlock. Devil just plant himself. Oh, the music is so good, so you already know. Most of the time, when the music is good, Satan is in the band. Because he cold. <laughs> God crafted him 
as a musician, so you know he can play. Yeah. When you do not hold the line of holiness and stifle Jezebel and her worldliness, you will always be invaded by what? Seducing worldly spirits. You got to hold the line of holiness. Got to hold the line. It's going to upset some people. It's going to upset some of your big givers. Some folks come to church just because they have money. They've done that. They've come here. Wrote me checks and everything. Here you go, Pastor. And I took it and spent it. Oh, there's no difference. It all spins the same. The bank didn't ask me that the devil write this. No, it was just a check, bro. And I spent it. But I'm not going to do what you say. Yeah, they write me a check. Expect me to do what they say. We just want to bless you. Let me just put this, just put a little piece of money right there. You get home. Oh, okay. Now, brother, there's a, there's a few things. Uh -uh. <laughs> but you still got that check. No. <laughs> see, these, see, see these shoes? <laughs> I ain't got that money. <laughs> we don't do that here. Your money don't matter here. Now, your money matters when it comes to the bills. But the way things are, the way we do things at ABC as the elders and all that, man, please, we don't know what you give it. So you ain't about to impress nobody into us making a decision against what God wants us to do in this ministry. Just not going to happen here. Take your money and buy a building and have church in there. I don't know why some of these folk won't just start a church. But when you do not hold the line of holiness, you got to hold the line. You got to look at somebody and say, you got to hold the line. Some things just can't happen in church. And some things you just can't be doing outside of church. We got to hold the line of holiness. I don't care how much fun it looks like. I don't care how many folks are doing it. You got to hold that line because God respects your hold. He respects it. He can move in the midst when you hold the line. So you got to hold the line of holiness, and then ooh, you got to shut the witch up. You got to stifle Jezebel. Jezebel will have you out there doing everything you said y'all wouldn't do as a ministry. That's what witches do. Jeremiah 23 and 11. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. The devil has one concern in this hour, and that is stopping God's church. Look at somebody and say, one concern. one concern. I want you to get this. I really do. All right, let me get up here. I'm short. I want y'all to get this. There's only one thing the devil's after, and that's the church. One thing. One thing. One thing. So the way he attacks the church is he gets in people. To make them attack the church. You know the funny thing? He don't get in worldly people to do it. He get in church people to do it. When the devil wanted to attack Jesus. He didn't have the Romans do it. They got one of Jesus's to do it. Yeah. Always happens that way. So somebody in church going to get bitter, get angry. Church going to do something, make them mad or whatever. Now they're an enemy of the very church they say they're a part of. Don't even know that the devil is using them for his end, his end time agenda. To destroy God's church. Can I keep preaching in here? The devil has one concern in this hour. And that is stopping God's church. Jesus bragged and said. The gates of hell will not prevail. Against. Against what? His church. This was a call to war by Jesus. And the devil has worked for ages to make his statement untrue. 
Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build what? My church. And the gates of hell shall what? Won't win. That's what prevail is. He said the gates of hell aren't going to win. You're not going to win. Churches all over the world are closing, operating online, social distancing, and mass wearing during services all over the world. Members are insisting that the leaders of these churches adopt these safety measures or they will not come. I wish y'all would do that here. Uh, brother, you know, I, the reason why I'm not coming is because you have not adopted the latest uh, CDC. Because it's got to be the latest because it keeps changing. The latest <laughs> CDC measures that are in place, brother. I don't know if you... Brother, we don't miss you. We don't miss you. I promise we don't. spread <laughs> the lack of strong leadership and pastors willing to lay down their lives for the sheep is causing the church to fold and give in to the end time agenda John 10 and 11 I am the good shepherd the good shepherd does what you're not a good shepherd, you're not willing to give your life for the sheep. That means you got to be willing to die if there is something floating around. You got to stand in front of the sheep and declare with the power of God, whatever this is, is not greater than the God I serve. And unless I have faith, the folks following me aren't going to have faith. The people following you are going to have the same faith. got to have faith in this hour. Yes. Yes, sir. Summary! <laughs> Praise the Lord. The inconsistency of modern day believers is astonishing. They wear masks, take temperatures, social distance, and protect themselves in the house of the Lord. You protected the, this oxymoron. You're protecting yourself in the house of the Lord. Don't think too hard now. You protecting yourself in the house of the Lord. But in their own houses, they watch perverted movies. <laughs> Listen to music created by devil worshipers. They eat bad foods and are not concerned at all about their exercise, sleep, or lifestyle. So you protect yourself in the house of God. But in your own house. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, this is strong delusion. Eating a bag of Funyuns, drinking a Tahitian treat between pulling the mask up and down. Strong delusion. Watching Friday, Friday after next, the next Friday, and another Friday. You didn't watch the Friday, you got the box set, the Friday trilogy in your house but in the church you protect yourself <laughs> look at somebody and say strong to lose instead of trusting God with their daily lives they make God and Christianity a supplement y'all know a supplement isn't the meal it's in the name supplement that means this is to help the meal or what 
was missing in the meal. But this is not the meal. But they make God and Christianity a supplement to aid them in their ambitions and convictions. When it comes to church, it's optional. And Zoom will do just fine. But when it comes to their worth ethics, ambitions, and goals, they are astute and poised for success. You tip for tap for everything. But when it comes from church, that's optional. We'd be all right. I know I'm preaching. What happened to our love for God? What happened to our love for each other? What happened to the respect for being taught and led by God's chosen? Why do we know it all? And we'll do whatever social media tells us. The brutes have come and taken over the hearts of God's people. It's time to what? Repent. And get back on the right path to Jesus. When he returns, he is only coming for those that are aligned with his plan and not the plan of this world. Jeremiah 10 and 23, the closing of that passage. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of the man is not in himself. We don't know what we're doing. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. We just can't do it without it. Oh, Lord, correct me. Correct me. Man, you don't let these messages that you get in here, if you don't let them correct you, and I mean just let them, you don't think they don't correct me? I'll be back there sometimes, Elder, weeping and wailing and gnashing my teeth, whatever that means. Just sounds painful. I'll be back there. I mean, sometimes the word will hit me. Because it hits us all. And we all have to be in position to say, Lord, correct me. Like Jeremiah says. I know that the way of man is not in himself. It's not in us. We need God's correction. Make it right, Lord. So, Lord, correct me. But with judgment. Not in thine anger. So, correct me before I make you mad. Correct me before I make you mad, Lord. I I don't need... need somebody to come and do this I'll get before you and repent and be corrected before you're angry with me lest thou bring me to nothing everyone stand to your feet He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. He wants us prepared without spot or blemish. He was likening it unto a bride and a wedding, you know, way back then. He brides now, you know. (laughs) But we want him to see us without spot or blemish. So this is the process where we take care of that. When you hear a message that's convicting and the tone of the message is correction and it says, correct me, O Lord, you need to just, hey, correct me, God. I want to be right before I mess things up. So correct me, Lord. We're open. If you you want to come up, come on, and we're going to pray for you. You receive this correction. Get me in line, Lord. Put me there where I need to be. Correction. Where I need to be, you know, a lot of times I get the luxury of repenting and getting before God and snotting and crying before I get in here because while I'm working on the sermon, sometimes I got to take a pause and make sure my heart is clean, make sure I'm good with God, make sure I, I have to do it. I'm just as human as anybody in here, so you don't see me doing it when I'm in here because I'm 
mostly directing the service, but man, I have to do it. We all need correction because we it's not in us. And what that's really saying is we've been through so much and done so much and seen so much and so much has happened. Sometimes it's really, really hard for us to see our way. Yeah, yeah. And we need the power of God to direct us. Anyone else? We in the end times, almost 2022. We still coming in here. No separation, really no face coverings. Not even concerned about any of that. We concerned about the inside being clean. Amen. I ain't worried about no germs. I ain't worried about no outside viruses. I can take some vitamin C and all that. I'm worried about what's on the inside. Making sure I'm clean on the inside. It's my heart. I can't put a mask on my heart. I can't social distance from my heart. I can't avoid what's in my heart. Did you know that? You can't avoid what's in your heart. So I need my heart cleaned. And I need it corrected. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, Father God. First, we just want to thank you, Lord, because in this hour, last hour of 2021, you're still with us. You never left. You're still here. Watching social media, listening to the news, listening to old Lion Fauci and all of these folks will make somebody just lose hope. But God, we don't listen to them. We listen to you. And your word has promised us that you are with us. And we'll know when you're no longer with us because we'll be with you. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for still being here. Thank you, Lord, for still healing, delivering, and setting free like you've always done. Thank you, Lord, for still having mercy, grace in our times of need. Thank you for still forgiving, loving, and caring for us. Thank you for never leaving us like you promised, always being here. Thank you, Lord, for chance after chance. When we blew it, you gave us another one, and you make those available for us. Thank you for being the God of your word and doing everything you promised. We thank you, Lord. And right now we come before you asking you, Lord, correct our hearts, God. Correct us, Lord. Put us in the right place. Fix what's in there. That area that we protected for so long. Father God, empty it out and clean our hearts. Create in us a clean heart, God. Renew a right spirit in us. Father God, deal with the roots. Don't just purge the tree but go down in the ground deal with the roots that are bad father so that we can bear the right fruit and we come before you lord asking for forgiveness for all of our wrong that you will clean us up and cleanse us and father god we know that the devil is against the church but god we're going to stand for your church in this hour Father God, we're going to stand with our feet planted like that tree planted by the rivers of living water. We'll keep coming to hear the word. We'll keep coming to hear truth. Father God, and we'll keep applying it to our lives. And we'll stand strong in this last hour. We're going to be that remnant. We're going to be that remnant, God. No matter what the world is doing, we're going to stand in the name that is above every name we pray amen amen come on give God praise in here hallelujah 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 correct us Lord hallelujah 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 how many of you gonna stand no matter what are you really going to stand? Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm standing. No matter what. Come on, hug them and say, I'm not afraid to hug you. Hug them and say, I'm worried about the inside. I need the inside of the cup right. I ain't worried about anything but what God is worried about. And he's concerned about my insides that I line up with his plan. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, all the way to your seat. Just hug folks. Tell them hallelujah. Tell them I ain't afraid of what you got. Because if you got Jesus, that's what I want. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Come on, Elder.